Greetings, everyone. I thought it might be fun tonight to do uh, a little prep video pitting two of my Gyotas against each other head to head. And these are the two most different Gyotas in my collection. Of And granted, my collection of Gyotas is fairly modest. I have about a half dozen of them. But these are the two that are the most different. And this one is a very old Masahiro carbon steel Gyuto. This is a mono steel knife, a very classically shaped in the Japanese Gyuto tradition, which was modeled on old, the classic old French chef knife shape. And uh, this is, you can still find these new. They call this the Virgin Carbon Series now, and you can buy these. And this is a workhorse. This knife is thick and chunky and heavy, and you can see where down at the bottom where the, the mirror polish is that I, I thinned and polished the primary bevel considerably. And it's an asymmetrical double bevel, which means this side of the knife is flatter and has only a tiny bit of bevel. But this is a a longer, narrower, thicker, heavier Gyoto with an asymmetrical double bevel. <clears throat> this is my Takeda large Gyoto. It is incredibly thin and light. It has a true 50-50 double bevel and is unconventionally shaped being that it is much taller and thinner than your typical Gyoto. And this is an ironclad knife with a core of Aogami super, super blue steel, whereas this one is just kind of generic, very high quality, but more generic uh, Japanese carbon steel, which is often used to make various types of tools and workhorse kitchen knives. So this is much more of a purist thoroughbred kind of Gyuto, hand hammered, hand forged in a small operation by basically a very few people, supervised by the, the man himself, Takeda san. And this is more of a factory knife made to be a workhorse for, for busy working chefs. So I'm making sauce tonight, and I have a couple of uh, onions and a couple of peppers to chop up. So I thought it would be cool to do just a little side-by-side, -side and perhaps offer some observations about any differences between these. Now, one thing these two knives have in common is that neither of them have been sharpened very recently. And so they're, they're both still very sharp, but neither of these was like, you know, just sharpened today or anything. So just kind of pull them off the wall and do the thing. So let's begin, <clears throat> let's begin with the Masahiro. And uh, I'm gonna do one onion and one pepper each with each of these and offer observations. So obviously very sharp. Always wipe your carbon steel. This is a, uh, I get best results wiping with a slightly damp towel. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna spare you all the agony of having to sit here while I peel the onion. So I'm gonna do half, half of each onion with each knife, just so you can kind of see what's up. And then I'll do um, probably half of half of one pepper with each knife. So you'll see basically the identical cuts from both knives. My peeling job on this one wasn't the best, but it will suffice. So Right away, this knife is heavier. This this knife probably weighs 60 or 70 percent more than the other knife, even though it seems taller and bigger. Now, this is a 300 millimeter 
you it's a, it's a very long knife and yet despite that the uh, and despite the asymmetrical bevel it it glides very easily it doesn't steer much if at all it's thin enough down close to the edge despite being an overall kind of thicker chunkier design um, it's uh, it's very neutral in its performance I mean when I you know drop it through the onion there's no steering there's no pulling even though the, the bevel on the one side is larger than the bevel on the other side, it's not, it doesn't really steer, it's very neutral. And you can see it made short work of that onion. And this is, uh, this knife is not a laser. This is a, this is kind of a workhorse knife. This is made for, to, to stand up to heavy duty commercial type use and not deform, not bend, not chip. The steel is a little softer, so it will lose its edge a little faster, but it also takes an edge very easily. It will resist chipping. So now this is the complete opposite. This thing is an absolute laser, and even though it's much wider than the other one and almost as long. It's a, it's much less massive. And the, the performance is just, I mean, as far as falling through vegetables is just staggering, staggeringly good. Let me peel this and then we'll slice this one up. Both of these, even though these knives both feel uh, very different to use, the performance of both is so stellar that I'm not sure there will be any real difference evident to you from this video, but this just, I mean, if only I had skills, but this knife falls through the onion so easily that it's just almost stupid how sharp this is. And uh, after a sharpening, it's even more ridiculous, but you know, that's beside the point. Now I'll tell you why I like the taller shape. The taller shape can ride against your knuckles for this kind of chopping. And I feel very confident doing a faster chopping action with a taller type blade. Now that's just me. You know, other people Have very different takes on this and you know it, it a lot of it boils down to your individual style of using the blade now this is a big half an onion and the fact that I could mince that up that fast I'm being a little more careful now I'm getting a thicker part and I'm thinking about how the video is going and just trying to, obviously I don't want to hurt myself, but I think you can see that this uh, does a pretty good job. So let me just finish that up. I tend to get my hands out of my left hand out of the way for the final little bits of chopping. I think you can see that either of, either of these knives is a a very nice tool and will will fall through your ingredients when properly 
thinned up, thinned out down behind the edge and sharpen will fall through your ingredients very readily. So let's do a pepper and I'll do some draw slicing on the pepper so we can possibly compare the uh, toothiness, the bitiness of the edge. So I know I know people some people uh, pretty much just shave the outside of the pepper off and only use it. Um, I can see that for some dishes, but generally speaking, you know, if I'm mincing this thing up and putting it in a sauce like I'm doing tonight, you know, I want to use as much of it as I can, which means basically I just cut it in half and then I, I uh, break the core out and get most of the seeds out and that's it so let's let's try a little draw slice that's pretty nice i mean i can't i can't actually feel when the knife uh, touches the pepper so let's do a little push cut i'll do i'll try to replicate Exactly the same pattern of cutting with the other knife. So sharp. Like I say, you know, neither of these knives have been sharp in a while, so you're seeing now I'll do a little a little rock little rock chop just to you know mix it up a little. The Gyoto is modeled on the classic French chef knife shape, basically the the uh, the classic sabatier type shape. Back from even before it was called a sabatier. So that's pretty nice. This knife, you know, wow, it's it's great. I love this knife. Um, this knife because it's so long and has a pretty straight edge and it's just sturdy. I love to use this one like for taking the skin off a of fish fillet. You know, um, for for fish butchery, I mean a Deba, one of my Debas if I'm playing the fish is best, but then when it comes time to skin, I prefer a Gyuto or a Sujihiki for the skinning. Okay, so now the Takeda much thinner, much lighter, and we'll see uh, how the cutting performance compares. I would say, um, if I if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that the Masahiro may be in a better state, a less used state following its pack sharpening than the Takeda. However, the, the steel of the Takeda is much harder, much more rugged. The difference between uh, a generic Japanese carbon steel and Aogami Super in hardness and toughness is difficult to overstate. So, put that here. This is a nicer looking. Let's do this half. So let's uh, try the draw slice. Wow. It's, wow. So, so laser like. I mean, if you're gonna, if you wanna, if you like to slice this way, you know, awesome. Even this one's so toothy. This Aogami Super, even sharpened up to 8,000 grit is just so toothy. I mean, it just drops through a soft, you know, or a hard, sorry, a hard, waxy, slick vegetable skin like nothing. Even without me holding the ingredient, it just, it'll move a little bit just because that skin's so waxy, but 
Okay, so this also this actually has a slightly more curved edge and being a little taller than the Takeda, we can try, you know, a little rock chopping here. Again, I'm just trying to sort of replicate. So that's pretty nice. And then, you know, you can also do it this way if you choose. Or you can push. You can do that. The only, the only thing, this, this Takeda is so, so sharp and thin that when you try to do certain actions with it, if you try to do this, if you try to do that, that kind of forward slicing rock chop with it, it actually, it just cuts into the cutting board and it drags down because it literally cuts into the wood. I'm sitting here looking at the fresh cuts this knife made, made in the wood. Like if I just, you know, if you're just trying to do this, it, it drags because it cuts into the wood. It's so stupid sharp. So maybe that would be the, maybe this knife would work better for that style of cutting if it was just a little less sharp. The Masahiro is a little more forgiving in this regard. Like if you if you do this kind of cutting, you know, um, the Masahiro is a, is a little bit lower in absolute sharpness and a little thicker and a little less radical of an edge and it's plenty sharp enough to cut your food but not so sharp that it will literally dig a gouge in the cutting board and stick in it just from the most light pressure forward slicing so that's um you know i just thought it might be fun to do this little comparison between these two knives which are you know they were both sharpened by me using very similar techniques and uh, I just thought it might be fun to kind of show these two back to back because of my of my own modest collection of Gyutos these two are about the most dissimilar that you can get so that's all for tonight um, I'm going to make a pot of sauce and tomorrow I'm going to do something for uh, Thanksgiving, I'm going to do kind of a fun eggplant dish and that I kind of just conceived in my own brain. And uh, we're going to see if it works out, but I might uh, do a little video with that, with uh, prepping the eggplant and doing all that. So I hope all of you have a wonderful night. And if I don't see you tomorrow, happy Thanksgiving to my fellow American friends and uh Best wishes for an end of your week to everyone else, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.